I was out of town for the past week, and before I left, I was in the middle of working on my next video. I'd finished my script, recorded the audio, and finalized the gameplay footage, and then almost immediately accidentally deleted pretty much all of it. Now I'm finally back, and I wanted to re-record today, but since I've been gone for a week, I'm already getting pretty rusty. I started warming up and practicing the techniques I'm going to show in the next video, and I got to this one. This is a pretty simple move that a lot of people have down. But I'm not really that good at Fortnite, and for some reason I kept whiffing over and over, missing my lower ramp and failing to catch myself. So I did what I do normally when I want to improve on a technique, and started to break things down a bit. This technique has a few parts. You need to place a cone and the floor, you need to half edit each of them, you need to jump at the right time, and finally you need to reset the edit and then place your ramp to catch yourself. I had all of this down, except for that last step. When I get stuck like this, where you're just placing a build, I position my character at the point where I would be and then run my cursor around to test the placement areas. I find that this helps me figure out where I need to aim when it would otherwise be a somewhat invisible target. So I want to place a ramp, and naturally I look down to see how low I need to aim. The placement area isn't too bad, although it's a bit lower than usual. And then I remembered some research I learned about while studying computer science in college. There's this thing called Fitz's Law. People call it Fitz's Law, dropping the extra S, but hey, people whose names end in S deserve their own S's too. Anyways, Fitz's Law is a formula developed in the 50s used to model how hard a target is to select. It's really popular in a field of computer science known as human-computer interaction, often called HCI, and that's because it can be used to evaluate things like the usability of buttons in a user interface. Fitz's law is pretty simple. The formula dictates that as the distance of a target increases and the width of a target decreases, the difficulty of selecting that target goes up. This is the original formula, but most people use this version now instead. Details aside, the concept makes sense, and over the years, and after a lot of different experiments using mice, touchscreens, pen tablets, underwater, the formula does a good job of holding up. It makes sense why Fitz's Law is relevant here, because distances and the sizes of targets and clicking on targets, that's like entirely what a shooter is. But here's something unique about building in Fortnite as a shooter. Usually, you would never have a reason to look straight down or straight up if you're playing a game like Counter-Strike. But when you're building, sometimes you might do that to place a build, because builds have really large targets that extend to the entire cursor space. And there's something really special about the edges of a space when it comes to Fitz's Law. Because if my target is on the edge of a navigable space, it doesn't just have the size of the target, it effectively has the size of the entire outside of the space too. If I throw my mouse all the way down, once I hit the bottom of the cursor space, the cursor doesn't move. What that means is if we go back to the formula, we can make the width of the target we're calculating way larger. Technically, it's infinitely large because I can continue to move my mouse down forever and the cursor will still stay on the target. The big implication here is that build placements on the edges are actually really, really easy targets. So with this knowledge, we can now come back to Fortnite land. That ramp I keep missing? That's now a super easy target to hit. I can just slam my cursor down and I'll get it almost every single time. And that's basically what I did, and it worked really well for me. Literally, just that revelation made me go from failing most of the time to almost always succeeding. And I'm not making up this story for this video either, this is almost an exact play-by-play -play of what I did. The moral of the story here is kind of two things. First, keep an eye out for techniques where this can apply, it might make it easier for you to perform them with this in mind. A hint, the waifu cones have this same property. And second, I think there's always a certain potential for two things that can seem separate at times to overlap. Who knows, maybe our next big break in the Fortnite building meta will come from architecture theory. But anyways, that's it. I thought this whole thing was interesting and wanted to share. Next video is coming soon. Thanks for watching. And check out my Twitter.